In this video, you'll learn about the terminal characteristics of diodes. We've already discussed the ideal IV characteristics of the diode, pictured here, where we broke up the characteristic into two distinct regions of operation, reverse bias, where no current flows, and forward bias, where no voltage drop appears across the diode. The true IV characteristics of a diode differ in some important ways. First of all, when forward biased, a small but finite voltage drop appears, which is a weak function of the current flowing. Second, in reverse bias, there's a very small but finite reverse current flowing, which is not even visible on this plot. And then finally, there's a third region of operation, reverse breakdown, where with very large reverse voltages applied, current begins flowing in a significant amount in the reverse direction. We'll go over the modeling of each of these differences in turn. Diodes are essentially just p-n junctions, with the p-terminal being the anode and the n-terminal being the cathode. For a review in the operation of p-n junctions, you can go to chapter 3. The IV characteristic of p-n junction and hence a diode is given by this exponential relationship shown here. In this expression, IS is a device constant that depends on the material property of the semiconductor, and we're going to focus on silicon as well as the geometry of the p-n junction. You'll see that the current is exponentially related to the forward voltage bias applied to the diode V. And in the exponent is also this term Vt, the so-called thermal voltage, which is proportional to absolute temperature. The constant of proportionality includes Boltzmann constant K and the fundamental electronic charge Q. Substituting in the values of these constants gives us a relationship between the thermal voltage and absolute temperature shown here. If we consider room temperature, we find that the thermal voltage is about 25 millivolts, which is a nice round number that's useful to keep in mind. Now, you may also note that for forward voltages V that are at least two, three, four times larger than the thermal voltage, Vt, which is again only 25 millivolts at room temperature, we can neglect the term minus one in this expression and arrive at a simple exponential relationship as shown here. Again, this relationship is very accurate for forward voltages greater than about 100 millivolts. We can finally invert this exponential relationship and say that forward voltage V is logarithmically related to the forward current flowing I. These exponential voltage current relationships only apply in the reverse and forward regions. If we substitute in a value V equals zero into this expression, we would see that we get a current of precisely zero. Finally, as we let V become negative, and especially as it gets absolute value much larger than Vt, we see that the expression, the bracketed expression becomes negative one, and you end up with a fairly constant current, reverse current I flowing with a value of IS. IS in absolute terms is a very small value. So this is shown here in a compressed scale. In reality, this part of the plot would be very, very close to zero, but slightly below it. Finally, it's important to keep in mind that this exponential voltage current relationship does not apply in the reverse breakdown region. The exponential voltage current relationship of a diode can be used to arrive at some interesting and useful relationships between the voltage and current flowing through two identical diodes operating with different forward voltages and forward currents, or in fact the same diode but operated at different points in time with different forward voltages and currents. So using the exponential voltage and current relationship, we can relate V1 to I1 as follows. And V2 to I2 as follows here. Again, assuming the diodes are identical, or in fact the same diode, then IS would be the same in both cases. 
taking the ratio of these two expressions, we get the following relationships between V1, V2, and I2, I1. The constants IS cancel out, and we see that the ratio of currents in these two circumstances is exponentially related to the change in voltage in between these two circumstances. If we take the logarithm of both sides, we get this relationship over here. That is, the change in the forward voltage drop across the diode is Vt times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the two currents. Now, if we turn this natural logarithm into a base 10 log, then we see that explicitly for a factor of 10 increase in the forward current flowing from I1 to I2, we expect the forward voltage drop to change by 2.3 times the thermal voltage. That's about 60 millivolts at room temperature change in forward voltage drop for a factor of 10 increase in forward current. That's a very steep increase in current versus voltage. As a result, for any reasonable value of current that we might expect to flow in a given diode, the forward voltage drop across it is going to be restricted to a very narrow range of values. This will lead us to a simplifying approximation later, where we simply assume that the forward voltage drop across a diode is a constant over a very wide range of currents. Finally, just a reminder that this exponential voltage current relationship only applies in the forward and reverse bias regions and does not apply in reverse breakdown over here. So these expressions also don't apply in reverse breakdown. Finally, let's discuss the temperature dependence of the IV characteristics of the diode. You may recall that the thermal voltage Vt is proportional to absolute temperature T. This would suggest that as the temperature increases, the denominator in this exponent increases, and you might expect the overall diode current to decrease. However, what's important to keep in mind is that the constant Is is also a very strong function of temperature. Specifically, as temperature increases, Is increases dramatically. This effect overwhelms the temperature dependence of the thermal voltage Vt. And as a result, for all temperatures of interest, when the temperature increases, the diode current also increases. This is captured by the sketch over here on the right, where we see that if we consider two different temperatures, the higher temperature IV characteristic will be shifted left and up compared to the lower temperature IV characteristic. So specifically, if we consider a diode operating at two different temperatures, but with the same forward current flowing, we would expect the forward voltage to be less when the temperature is higher. The exact ratio of that dependence varies with temperature and the specifics of the diode device properties and geometry. However, a pretty good rule of thumb is that for every degree increase in temperature, we expect the forward voltage drop across the diode to decrease by about two millivolts, assuming the forward current I is kept constant.